good people. Welcome to another episode of Funky Marketing Podcast. And today uh, I won't uh, have like a long introduction, just a short one and tell the you that we're going <laughs> we to talk about how to make YouTube works for you. And I have the perfect guest for that. I would say my, my friend and somebody who I look up to, Alexander Ashkovich, is joining me to talk exactly about that. Alexander, you can tell us exactly why you are the person for the task. But I would tell you because this intro is a long intro for YouTube. This is a too long intro because people don't know who I am, what I do, what should I do. But you did start over good. You did uh, uh, enter. You did uh, point out with the hook that I am a person that can help people make better YouTube videos, and that is what I do. And if you are asking yourself, for those who are not watching, why a fifty-year-old fat man? Uh, is a uh, YouTube expert on Balkan. That's because I like YouTube. Uh, I like uh, tinkering with video. Uh, those are two of my passions. I had a TV show before uh, when it was a rarity to have a TV show, even in Serbia. And after that, YouTube, uh, well, uh, it was somehow a logical conclusion of my career uh, because I was always focused on a video. I also streamed. I streamed the video game World of Tanks. Um, I acquired 20,000 subscribers, which is not too much, but uh, those numbers were big enough uh, to crown myself the biggest uh, World of Tanks YouTuber on Balkan. I used to stream on YouTube, not on Twitch. Uh, I wanted to try how that uh, functions, uh, what you can get from that, and I use Cursor TV or Code Geni, as it, uh, my channel is now called. I use it to test uh, various tactics, various things uh, uh, that I could not do on the client channels. Uh, I help companies and uh, people uh, to realize uh, how to use YouTube, how to use YouTube properly. That is my mission. That is my, my goal. See? See how it's done. <laughs> exactly exactly so, sounds good guys i see people joining us uh because we are streaming live on multiple platforms I see people joining us uh on linkedin uh, unfortunately the restream doesn't give us the insights how many people are looking uh the stream from uh from linkedin but linkedin does so uh welcome if you have any questions about youtube feel yeah free feel free them. to ask i'll try to answer them and that's it yeah, and I would like to uh, to uh, kick this off with uh, with one thing that we mentioned just before we started recording, and it is something that uh, I've been talking about with with Steven Schmidt. Uh, the the episode uh, will be out officially in a, in a, in a few days. If you are listening uh, to this episode, you probably heard about it or not. Go back to the podcast and listen to it. But we we uh, talk about a few things, which is Google is changing, AI is here, uh, the, the searches become uh, pretty much different. Uh, and, you know, his prediction is that it's going to be like a chat. So basically you get the answers. And because of that, YouTube will be the number one place when all the action will be. And having that in mind, what works uh, for, for a lot of people is entertainment, right? We are all people that, you know, love, to have some fun, to see something that's interesting, to see something that we usually don't see. And when we look at the B2B SaaS and tech and IT, not many people are entertaining, right? And not many people can actually create meaningful, entertaining stuff. And that's a problem. So let's try to help them out. Okay. Let, let, me, br let me be first a little bit technical. Um, SEO in YouTube, on YouTube is very important. YouTube SEO is very important. Uh, most of the people who who do YouTube, they know that it, it is important to put your keywords in title, your keywords in description, and your keywords in text. This is a common knowledge, at least in my circles. So this is very important. But it's not important as it was before. Why? Watch time. EA, how long people watch your video is one of the most important factors for ranking your video. So you can have a shitty title, no description, no text, and your video will rule if you have an interesting video. And this is the biggest problem for people in this uh, area, in this in the IT. 
because they do not make entertaining videos. Why? Because they don't know how, they do not want to make entertaining videos because they believe that would uh, somehow uh, decrease the credibility of their product or something else. Whatever is the reason, uh, those videos are informative. Nobody says different. They are informative, but they are not entertaining. And since they are not entertaining, people do not watch them in full. Hence, watch time is much lower than other videos. And that is the biggest problem. But, there is a but. You don't need to be entertaining all the time. You need to be mm -hmm. just a little bit entertain, uh, just a little bit interesting in order to, uh, let's say, uh, in order to lure the viewer into watching your video. If somebody comes for SAS, they are coming for information. They are not coming for uh, 30 minutes of jokes and humor. So, let's make it 5 minutes of jokes and 35 minutes of information, and then you get a good video. And why is SEO important for those niches? Because people search. People search something. They need to see top 10 uh, SaaS softwares, uh, top 15 best tools, uh, or something else, and they will search those things. And for people who are who have uh, YouTube channels that are uh, related to IT, they need to implement a good SEO in order to get a successful channel. And the most important thing, avoid long intros. So, uh, from the get-go, uh, shoot to the target, tell them what you're offering, and of course, tell them that later in the video you will give them more information. That is the, one of the most important advices that I could give to anyone that is listening to me and is thinking about starting a YouTube channel or has a YouTube channel and wants to improve the metrics. So I, I have a question. Uh, we talk about not having long intros, having an interesting one and intriguing enough so people, uh, you know, we lull them into watching the rest of the video. But when we are recording for multiple platforms, so for audio and for YouTube, what can we do here? Because usually on audio, right, you, you, a lot of podcasts have like a longer intro yes. right, from that perspective. I mean, you and I both are in Serbia, so we see in, in Serbia people watch podcasts on YouTube, right? It's, yes. so, it's totally different. So maybe any advice related to that? Well, basically timestamp. Timestamp is one of the most important features on YouTube. Uh, if you have a podcast and you want to promote somebody that is uh, offering you money, sponsors and stuff, you need to do it uh, in the beginning. But people, most of the people don't want to listen to that. You create a uh, timestamp uh, uh, and uh, that timestamp uh, will give uh, a viewer a choice to skip over that part that doesn't interest him. Some will stay. Some will not. That's one thing. The other thing is uh, you can use uh, uh, the beginning of the intro to create a hook to explain who is your guest and to uh, give them a little uh, insight into the video and then go with the sponsor stuff. And the third thing that I prefer the most, um, I have a podcast that is not IT related, so um, we cut uh, several uh, pieces, several short pieces from the podcast, put it to the beginning of the podcast, and that way we give them a little bites, sound bites uh, or video bites, depending on where you listen, where they can see what will happen in the podcast, and this is the way to hook them in uh, so they can stay and watch the whole podcast. Yeah, I love, I love that answer. That's that's exactly what I what I needed to hear. I see people get engaged. That's nice. Yeah, Liam. Liam is uh, uh, leaving very good comments. I must add, Leah. Leah, I'm sorry. Leah, Leah, Leah. Yeah, yeah, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> very sorry, Leah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Do continue, please. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Uh, coming up with the intro. That's good. Uh, but one thing I want to ask you, and it will kind of give us the, the, the way uh, into which I want to go. And it is, you know, there are tons of podcasts like this when two people sit down and talk to each other. 
right? How can we make those ones a little bit more interesting? Okay, we can cut shorts. We can we can go into that, and we'll touch shorts definitely during the you yeah, know during the uh, episode. During, about the shorts, I have a announcement to make a new feature that YouTube uh, uh, just released. But uh, let's get back to your question: How to make podcasts more interesting? Well, we could have podcasts naked, yeah, fully naked. You know, and that would be interesting. We could have podcast uh, dipped in the ice cold bath. Um, these kind of podcasts that you and I have, they are sort of the past. People now want something more extreme. Uh, we could have podcast uh, hanging uh, over the I don't know over the, the, the some gorge or something like that. So you need uh, a, a interesting setting. You need an interesting host. You need an interesting guest in order to achieve uh, a fame. But if you don't want to achieve the fame, if you want uh, to achieve a status in the community, you don't need that. You need an interesting guest and an interesting host. And that is the, that is the same since the beginning of TV, since the beginning of time. If two people are talking and they are interesting, they will have audience. And this, that is the bigger problem. The bigger problem is um, pushing through the noise. I, 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 can, I can bet you $100 million that at this time there is, let's say, 10,000 people who would be world stars if we had a chance to know for them, if we did know their language. Uh, pushing through that barrier, through that noise barrier that we all created by having millions of podcasts is the biggest problem. And yes, that can be done by creating shorts, that can be done by creating uh, uh, videos that are not short, but like three minutes, seven minutes. But you can also take something that guests had said and make it into a picture, make it an Instagram post. That's very interesting. The problem is uh, you have to share your content on all platforms, on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere. There is so much content uh, uh, at this moment that you need to spam people in order to be seen. And the uh, networks, Meta and Google, they value somebody who is uploading content every day. They value somebody who is uploading content every day. YouTube uh, will send uh, notifications for first three of your videos a day. So basically, it means you can publish three videos a day. For Instagram, I have an, a good authority because uh, we are cooperating and advising some people on Instagram accounts that the more you publish relevant material, the better it is for you. And that is the problem. Creating that kind of content for an entrepreneur, solo, solopreneur, is extremely difficult. And this is the biggest problem why many podcasts die, because people, they do not have time to create such, such volume of content. Yeah, that, that seems, you know, I, I was a guest yesterday, I think, on uh, B2B Sprints uh, podcast, and that was actually the topic. You know, why do so many companies uh lack the execution of the content marketing because like, they cannot create imagine a company let's say imagine a company that that is a medium IT company let's say they have earning prof earnings around 10 million euros per year that's 500 people let's say 500 people 500 employees they uh, they have to hire a person that will be their spokesperson that will be on YouTube. They have a spokesperson, but it's not a YouTuber. It's not a person that is uh, that's a communication manager. Uh, they probably give out a few interviews per year and that's it. No, you need a person that will communicate with your audience constantly, daily. That will create TikToks, that will create Instagram Reels. That can be the same that will create YouTube Shorts. That can be the same. That, were, 
that can create longer videos that will follow the trends on each of these networks. This is the biggest problem, following the trends. In order to become popular, you need to follow trends that will follow new features, new releases on each of these networks. You need a specialist, you need a content specialist that will be able not only to do all this, but be an entertaining person. Now, this, this is a tough nut to crack. And they do not want to, they not want to pay that person, uh, pay that person as they need to pay it. Because that person, uh, that person can be a TV host easily, you know, somebody who is charismatic and who knows that much, who is intelligent enough to realize those things, he can easily be a TV host. And they do not want to pay those uh, those people and. That's the problem. So they produce, let's say, 12 videos a year, maybe 15. They put it on YouTube. Nothing happens. Nobody sees it. And they decide that YouTube is not for them. Yeah, I see, I see that happening a lot, especially in the in the B2B and podcast sphere when, you know, you you need a subject matter expert, but you, you know, you need also that person to kind of know how to communicate, how to extract the knowledge from the guest and at the same time be entertaining. And if they have somebody, you know, in-house, then it comes to the time, you know, they need to pay that person well so it doesn't get out of the company. Because if it gets out of the company... They have to start the process again, finding a new person. And some person... I mean, in company, everybody is irreplaceable. Everybody is a replaceable person in company. But the problem is some people, some, some persons you can replace more easily. And some not. And that is the problem. And since the CEO, most of the CEOs are not young people anymore. Um, Most of them were born before the uh, boom of social networks. They know that they are important. They understand their value, but they do not understand the value of a person that will be a nexus for transforming, for, for broadcasting the company ethos onto the social networks. That is the first problem. The second problem is, of course, that most of those companies see themselves extremely, extremely high. They are mighty. They are so cool. They are infallible. And that is the biggest problem. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see uh, somebody who is singing praises all the time uh, to its company. I mean, you need to have... uh, uh, so, uh, a slight dose of self-deprecating humor, uh, and that is impossible for companies. No, 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 no. We must not just joke on ourselves. No, no, no jokes. And that yeah. is that is uh, one of the problem. But of course, we'll see. One other thing I would add to that is also, you know, disagreement, right? On a, on a podcast while you're recording the episode, especially you know if. Company is using, for example, a podcast or series of interviews to kind of as an ABM tool, right? So kind of uh, get the target companies, get the people from those companies to talk about and extract all the information so they can be able to sell them in the long term. But then, you know, you need sometimes to disagree with with those people. And then, the, but they are my future customers, right? I want to sell to them. How can I disagree with them? And then, uh, that's the no. problem. Yes, that's the problem because uh, people don't. I mean, people, um, uh, huh, people, people in IT don't understand how the algorithm works. Uh, an algorithm works uh, best when it's fed by a lot of data, and the data points for the algorithm are everything: comment, like, dislike, uh, uh, how long did you watch. Uh, did you start watching, then immediately uh, kill the video and went to the other video? Did you watch it several times? Did you watch one part, uh, then come back to see it again? The, everything everything I told you is data point for the algorithm. So, in order to have a video that will perform on YouTube, on YouTube, good, you need to have a lot of these data points. And getting them is not easy. People have to watch that on their own volition. And that is the biggest problem uh, that most of the managers in companies do not understand. 
they're like, we're gonna we're gonna put an ad and it will be that. No, it won't. Five seconds on YouTube, and then you can skip. And on Instagram and Facebook, it's worse even. Probably nobody will click on that and come to see your video. And now algorithm doesn't have data point. When do they have data point? When they have a lot of comments, when they have a lot of dislikes, likes. When do they have that? When videos are interesting and when there is something going on. And healthy discussion. Even if I don't agree with you, a healthy discussion is a good thing. Uh, I mean, Joe Rogan is one of the most popular podcasters uh, in the world. Not because he always agrees with his guests. He always, he mostly disagrees. He's trying to counter them. He's trying to, maybe he is wrong about some things. Maybe he is not. I'm not uh, talking about his beliefs. Yeah, I'm sure. talking about his way of, of podcasting. And that is something that proved beneficial for his YouTube channel and for his podcasting career. Yeah, I, I remember listening one of the episodes with Post Malone, I think, uh, a week or two ago, and like for it lasts for four hours, I think, and, and an hour and a half they were talking about, you know, are there aliens coming to the earth or no? <laughs> when you're talking for four hours with somebody, you went you went deep into the rabbit hole, my friend. You went deep, and that is the that is the that is the one thing that nobody can top uh, Joe Rogan because he drugs his guests, uh, he gives them liquor, and then they go down the, that rabbit hole, <laughs> and strange things can happen. But uh, for example, if you watch Lex Friedman. Alex Friedman has a different kind of podcast. But those podcasts, they cannot be compared to the podcast in IT. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they have much more interesting guests. I mean, I know that I'm an interesting person. I love that about myself. But as much as I believe in myself, I know that this will not uh, inspire a lot of people to watch us. This is a podcast that is a technical one dedicated to YouTube. People who are interested in YouTube will watch this. I'll try to give as much uh, advice as I can to them. But 99% of the Earth population is not interested in this topic. And that is the problem that we have. That's why we have to balance fun part and going into the rabbit hole, uh, are there aliens and stuff like that, with the data that we provide to uh, people who are watching us. Oh, uh... Few things are on my mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 tell, to give you uh, exactly what I'm thinking of when I when I see you know like entertainment coming to the B2B, I usually think of like uh, podcasts with hip hop guests when they have I don't know they 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 have a full round table of liquor of alcohol. They drink as much as they can. Everybody brings their own drink. Maybe drugs. Okay. Maybe why? Why? <laughs> well, uh, there's a, I don't know if you know about the podcast. They call all the smoke. It's actually it's actually about basketball. <laughs> but sometimes they smoke on the podcast, right? <laughs> I can imagine. It's a great <laughs> podcast. <laughs> then we had mushrooms. <laughs> and then we talk about SAS, you know. We look at it with our drugged, <laughs> drunk eyes, look at UE and go, mm, okay, we know what's going on here. This is the best thing. This UX design is the best. <laughs> exactly. Now should, now should be a pick on the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <For this episode laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> Yes, but, this, is, this is the fun part. This is the fun part of the podcast. But do please continue, okay? So yeah, you want so, to have a, a, a podcast uh, with rappers, but instead of rappers, you will have IT guys. A lot of drunk IT guys. Hmm. No, I, I, usually, I, usually, I usually like to, to get into the B2B things from different industries, right? Yes. And I think it's, it's slowly coming. For example, if I look at the documentaries, videos, like I like to look at snowboarders amazing videos and amazing videos doing. amazing videos amazing videos snowboarders and skiers amazing videos i agree okay 
Yeah, so I, I think we can all learn from those things and implement at least something, something into that, you know, bit by bit, not maybe, you know, I mean, the extreme would be sitting, you know, in the toilet and talk about things. But, you know, all depends who's your buyer. Are they going to listen to it? What's happening? So there are a lot of nuances over there. So uh, what would be your, let's say, you know, like two or three advices for the people in which direction they should go if they want to get, you know, an audience which is not only their target customers, but maybe a little bit wider than that? First of all, I would like to uh, commend Leah uh, mm -hmm. on, uh, on Shit Face Design, a podcast coming to device near you. I like it, Leah. <laughs> I'm going to take that name. <laughs> Second... It's really difficult to make an interesting podcast about IT. It's not mm -hmm. impossible, but it's really difficult. You need a good setting. So, not a studio. Maybe somewhere outside, somewhere that is uh, interesting. Let for ex let's say, for example, you're riding in a, in a carriage uh, through the park, and you have a camera in front, you have a camera in the back. Uh, that's one thing that, is, that could be interesting. Uh, you can drive in the car. You can drive in yeah, the car. That, that, that's a common one, yeah. Yeah, in the limo. You can drive in the limo. You can have girls in the limo that are pouring you champagne. You know? And you can discuss about big business moves that you're going to uh, do <laughs> or what that, that SAS can uh, generate. Having, yeah, about, beautiful, about lifetime having beautiful girls in your podcast <laughs> is always a plus. And boys, and boys, please, let's not be... Uh, how shall I... Uh, let's not be miso how do you say it's misogynia in English? Yeah, let's I not think that's the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to have a representation. Beautiful boys, beautiful girls. Uh, that could be interesting. You can have a clown that is juggling behind you. Yeah, all kinds of distractions that are not audio distractions. So only video distractions. Why? Because people. I'm sad to. I'm very sorry to say that, but TikTok and uh, social networks in general uh, cut our attention span so short. We need to see something moving all the time. We need to see that something is moving on the screen, and that's it. And probably, and we're going to have a new breed of the technicians that are. Uh, helping people create YouTube podcasts live and they will be mixing in, they will be listening to the, what are people are saying and trying to mix in stuff, you know, like mixing some videos, uh, mixing some explanations and stuff like that in order to make it more interesting. That is the the path that will be the, the easiest one because you create a, a podcast that's not live, of course, and then you send it to editing and editing room adds a lot of uh, bells and jingles and uh, memes and stuff like that in order to make it more interesting. Yeah, I, th I think we are now peaking on LinkedIn. So that means now is the time to get into the technical stuff. Yeah, stuff. No. Technical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> What are these two people talking? Uh, that they are talking about naked girls in a limo. <laughs> this is not Let's... a podcast I want to <laughs> listen. No, no, YouTube, guys, YouTube. We're talking about YouTube. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the good thing is that I didn't mention ever in the description that we're going to talk about SEO. YouTube, SEO. YouTube, ah, SEO. So now ah, this, ah. Is a, this is a surprise. So why don't you do something that you did to me one-on-one? -on -one? about my youtube channel oh, and all the other things oh, 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 oh. do it for the audience so so let's kind of uh you know please explain that one-on-one -on -one thing <laughs> anything sexual <laughs> guys yeah, yeah, yeah right B i mean basically he's a cute one. i need i need it he's a cute one he's a cute most one. of the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm uh I, I basically wanted uh alexander to kind of Kick me audit. in my butt about oh, about no, the, no, about the things audit. that maybe I know or don't, and you know I should implement. And basically, it was a nice in-depth audit that uh, you know uh, I try I try to use when I can. Let's say it like <laughs> that. I, I didn't fully implement yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, but that's please, please, yeah. Nemanja. I mean, there is a saying in Serbia that mm -hmm. uh, every uh, shoemaker has uh, a faulty boot 
and that mm-hmm. is something that is really really true uh, each of us that is in, into digital marketing uh, should uh, handle uh, our own channels much better but since we work all the time for the clients uh, i think that we don't have enough of a, how shall i put it enough of a resolve uh, mm-hmm. to implement the same strategies on our own channels because we have the clients, we have a private life, and now uh, to cut from that time, we don't know what to cut even more to uh, exactly. focus uh, on things that uh, are not that important to us. But let's say for the people who want to focus on YouTube, the biggest thing for YouTube is SEO. Because you are working with a small niche, you are working with a niche that is focused on the problem that you want to solve for them. And that should be uh, your video strategy. You should talk about the problems and how is your product solving them in a fun and interesting way. Uh, Stick it to the videos that is six, uh, seven minutes max max long. Uh, Don't make longer videos. If you don't want to, if you want to, of course, do it. It's not a problem. You can go with podcast. If you want, if you have a podcast, uh, use podcast uh, as a content, uh, and then cut that podcast into several segments and publish the, those videos on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, wherever you can, uh, and of course, uh, subtitle those videos, including subtitles in short videos. Now is a must. Let's get back to the SEO. Uh, I told you in the beginning, uh, uh, putting a relevant keyword in your title is a must, and you should put that keyword in the description and tag. You have to, the the title has 100 characters. First 80 are visible uh, for the humans, for you and me, but the rest is also visible for the algorithm. Therefore, the first part of the title I create when I create, I uh, create it. Uh, uh, I think about what would a human think about the title, what would be interesting to a viewer, and the last part I create for the algorithm. Yeah, I put all the keywords there in some semi semblance of some I don't know name or or something like that. It doesn't really matter. If you want to create a, a description, please make it at least three hundred words long. And try to be normal. You have ChatGPT to make your description or anything, just a little bit uh, rewrite it, and you'll get it. And when uh, we are talking about tags, tags are very important uh, for most videos. But if your video is in English, is in Spanish, German, and French, they are not that important. You need to uh, speak your keywords in. Uh, those languages because Google and YouTube understand your language and if you have keywords in your title description and tag that do not happen in the video they cannot hear it they will disregard that uh, it will be a negative sign for SEO so uh, I always tell people who are working on this in these languages who are talking these languages please include your tags but they are not uh, that important. And it's better to leave empty tags than put the same tag in every video. It's better to leave empty tags than put the same tag tags in every video. That's, if, you know, if you don't have time, you don't want to bother with tags, okay, leave that field empty. And don't use hashtags in the tag section. Use it in the description. So, hashtag in the description. Uh, anyone can see first three hashtags can be seen um, when you watch that video, uh, their position on top of your video. And that's a good thing uh, uh, as SEO, as a topic, uh, as a topic, uh, let's say, I don't know how I should put it, uh, uh, to creating a topic and and as SEO side, as SEO trick. So these are are things. Of course, uh, I told you, short intro, uh, start with the hook immediately. Uh, in first five seconds, you need to hook the viewer and you need to give them a reason to watch your video because that is the biggest problem between the newest uh, Justin Bieber song and your video. They have to choose your video. Uh, 
So you have to give them a reason why they should spend their precious six minutes on your video. So don't go, my name is that, I do that. That all can wait. You are here because of that and I can solve that problem. Here's how. Then you give them a part of solution and then you uh, go into who are you, what do you do, why they should watch this video and stuff like that. One thing, uh, I remember you told me about tags that we should reorder them, even if, if we use, you know, the, the few of uh, the same, but, you know, we add depending on the cast and how it goes, that we should always add them in a different order. Yeah, is that still relevant? Yeah, of course it's relevant. I mean, the problem is that most of the people, um, they have the same or similar tags. And that is really a bad thing. Uh, first, uh, it narrows down the audience that will see your video. That is the problem. If they are the same or very similar. So secondly, uh, uh, when you're putting tags, the first tags should be related to the video and to the topic of the video. And the second set of tags should be related to the topic of your channel. Or mm -hmm. something that is uh, relevant to your video, but not not highly relevant to your video, but relevant to your video. This is this is a, a small trick that I do when I optimize videos. Also, short ones on the or the long ones, depending what you want to do. Uh, now, uh, regarding YouTube Shorts, uh, YouTube rolled out a feature a few days ago. Now, when you upload a short there is in the YouTube studio uh, option where you can link that short video to a longer video that, that you cut that short from. So it's a great feature. You watch the short and uh, YouTube will uh, automatically give you a, a possibility to watch the long video. This is the best thing that YouTube has done in the long time. This is the best thing because shorts now, they taken over YouTube because YouTube is pushing that uh, uh, option so much in order to, uh, ah, how shall I put it, in order to destroy TikTok, but it won't happen. We all know it at, at this moment. But this this is the great thing. So you have a short, you publish it on YouTube channel, people find out your shorts independently uh, of their, uh, they find shorts independently of their browsing history. So if you watch some videos, they will uh, uh, discover queue for long videos and the discover queue for short video is not the same on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Shorts feed has their own algorithm where they uh, give you a different things similar to what are you watching, but a little bit different. So therefore, it's possible for smaller channels to push through uh, through the shorts. The problem is that a lot of shorts that are gathering a huge amount of views are from the bigger channels. And YouTube saw that, that they do not want that to happen. And they, they, they are now tweaking algorithm and trying to push smaller uh, YouTube, uh, smaller uh, YouTube channel shorts uh, to the audience that doesn't know for them. They want to help them discover new creators. Why? At, uh, established creators, they have their own audience. Uh, and there is something called fatigue. Uh, when you watch too much of some content or somebody's content, you don't want to watch it anymore. Therefore, you do not watch, watch YouTube. So YouTube is not uh, some good Samaritan that is helping smaller channels. No, no, no. They know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to push new people to interest uh, viewers to watch new people because they need people on the platform watching videos because then they can serve them what? Commercials. Of course. I mean, the commercials are getting better as well. Yeah, At they are. What I'm seeing. Yeah, they are. I'm not. I'm not. I am. I am a. I am YouTube Premium. <laughs> you can hate me all you like, until you pay YouTube Premium. You don't know what is watching YouTube. It is so serene and peaceful experience, full of joy. And if you don't want to pay that much money, uh, you can maybe use VPN and go to some less developed country 
let's say South America, and look how much YouTube Premium is there. It's a free tip for everybody that's watching. <laughs> I love it. Okay. A couple of things that are on my mind. So uh, if we, people from, you know, working in B2B companies now, especially in marketing, and some of them in sales, listening to the episode, and now they say, okay, YouTube is something that we want to invest in. You know, we want to stop investing in, in writing videos, right? Because we don't want to face the AI and everything else. We want to focus, focus on YouTube. What will be, you know, the steps that you would recommend them to do in order to do that? So we are talking about any form of, of video, not just the podcast, but any form of video. The problem is that for them, it will be a little bit expensive. Mm -hmm. First of all, they need to find the person that will edit those videos. And most of the companies will go for the professional editors. That's a problem. But getting a freelance editor over the internet is a much better choice. Somebody from less developed countries, they will do it as professional as people in their countries, but for a fraction of money. That's one thing. Second thing, they need need to have a content strategy. Content strategy can be anything, can be topics, can be develop video ideas for videos, etc. Third, it would be best to have a person that will present those facts in those videos. Why? People tend to to get to know person, they like personality. They can go with AI, they can create AI avatars. That is also a viable thing and much better for a company. Uh, then they are not dependent on a person that is presenting. Um, after that, they they have to start publishing videos, at least two videos a day, uh, two videos a week, and one short a week. So two longer videos per week and one short per week. Uh, if they do not have a podcast, if they do have a podcast, then one podcast, uh, one long video, and as much as possible shorts, maybe, let's say, seven shorts a week. They have to implement SEO strategy. What does it mean? They have to look at the competition. Uh, they have to research the keywords uh, to see which keywords uh, are interesting for them. They do not have, they don't need to be specific. They need to have some subject topics that are broader because they need a lot of people to watch those videos. The problem with YouTube SEO is uh, when you have a small number of people watching that video, it will create a small watch time and that video will not bloom. That is the problem. On When you do Google SEO, uh, the traffic itself that is coming to your website, if you do a good SEO, will be more than enough uh, to generate sales from you. for you. YouTube is the same, but you need to put uh, links in the description. You need to put links in the cards. You need to, uh, need to know how many people come to your website or did a purchase or did the action you want uh, because of YouTube videos. If the number of people who are doing that is uh, for you relevant and is paying the expenses, then you don't need to go wide. But if it's not, then you need to do some popular subjects, uh, topics, uh, the write some trends and stuff like that to see how can you interject yourself into their, that trend with something, with your, your take on it. Now, uh, definitely I need to give an example. For example, Let's say, let's say, uh, let's say uh, there was a trial between Amber Heard and uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, yeah. Yes. And a lot of legal companies exploded during the trial because they were explaining to the people what's going on. They were explaining to the people what's going on. 
You see, and this is the this is the move to make. So you see what's going on around you, and you try to find something that is interesting to the broader public, where you can how shall I put it, where you can help them understand a part of that uh, event. Um, when something happened with the submarine that got crashed on the on that floor, similar thing. It's a it's a world event, and you need to create the content that is relevant to that event, and you should present your, not present your product, like, like buy, buy, buy. No, you're talking about that, and then in the end you mention your product, uh, because the purpose of that video is not to sell, the purpose of, of that video is brand recognition. Yeah, I see that happening on, on LinkedIn as well, no matter if you're talking about the video or the post, like people say, hey, we are going into the niches, and LinkedIn also encourages people to go into the niche. And then when you look at who are the top voices, those are the people that talk about generic topics the most. Unfortunately. Right? But, but you know, uh, I'm the one who likes to talk about B2B, you know, B2B tech mostly, and I'm okay with that. But at least once a month, if not once a week, I need to have a post which will talk about, I don't know, Novak Djokovic or Jokic or something else. So it relates to the wider audience to everybody that's following me right to give them something it increases the the views and the reach of the other posts which are more specific and more targeted and it's the same on youtube each algorithm is the same it needs data points and data points for each algorithm are interactions it doesn't mean matter what kind of interaction interaction positive negative interactions have their ranking of course but it needs interaction Exactly. Now I know what my next post will be. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, it, it's already an hour. I like it, Nemanja. You're a great host. <laughs> yeah, t- time, time flies. Time flies. <laughs> we went into the black hole. <laughs> what do you think? Exactly. Are, there, are there aliens? <laughs> you, you, know, you know what? What I know, uh, not sure about the aliens. That, that's something that still bothers me. If I think about it, you know, did we actually went to the moon or no? Like we have more doubts really? now than, than 30 years ago. I'm not the one who is doubting that, but <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh. But what I know is that while we were live streaming this, I got three connection requests to LinkedIn, everybody offering me to build up my YouTube channel. And a lot of a lot of those people were actually liking this live stream, which is kind of <laughs> well. It's okay. You see, they they seem you talking to a YouTube expert. They believe that you need a YouTube channel manager, and that is okay. That is okay. That exactly. is a hustle. That is a hustle that I can understand. What can I say? Exactly. Tell tell me and the people when they can find more information about you. Where's the best place to reach out? Um, and uh, maybe, they can find you know, me on LinkedIn. Uh, that's the best thing. My name is Ashkovic Alexander. I optimize 10, 10K videos till this moment. And that white thing that just crossed the, uh, the screen is my dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's more interested in the ball than me. Anyhow, uh, I like to help people uh, with YouTube problems. Uh, if you need helping, contact me. It's not a problem. Uh, Unfortunately, I'm like a dentist. Nobody needs me until they really need me. And then when they need me, they need me to do it fast. And YouTube is not a fast game. YouTube SEO is a long game. It needs at least three to six months in order to see the first results. What is interesting about YouTube SEO, uh, YouTube YouTube, uh, video that is optimized the good way, the proper way, it can generate views for a few years. And that is something that is not possible on any other social networks. And that is why I think YouTube is the best thing for companies, because search is a really important part of YouTube. And if you optimize your video for search, it will generate leads for several months and maybe years. Sounds good. I I have... I don't know who was my guest because uh, I made I made a break of a few months, but I had a guest who was talking with fake uh, entrepreneurs, 
and basically he said his uh business he sold one and his business other things that he does went shit and basically what gives him the leads like he was banned on linkedin but youtube came up and three videos are bringing him all the incomes so it actually works okay you answer one of the two questions that i wanted to ask you for the end the another one is are there any tools that you recommend that people can use to kind of make it yes, easier for them? Yes, yes. Uh, Video Q and TubeBuddy are excellent tools for, for the beginners. They will help you a lot uh, with the tag recommendation, with the title, uh, keyword recommendation, stuff like that. And I use uh, Keyword Everywhere. It's a great tool that I like. Uh, it gives you keyword volume. Uh, so how many people are searching for that keyword on a monthly basis and how much money would you have to pay to Google in order to uh, advertise for that word. And for me, that's really important when I create my strategy. So those are only two things that I use. There are a lot of tools uh, on YouTube, uh, on YouTube, uh, on the internet that you can use, people using SEMrush and stuff like that. I don't because I have a lot of experience <laughs> when you are doing this job from for for last from 2015 so five and three eight years um some things are i don't know are part of my dna i just see the title and know what's wrong with it exactly exactly like that you know uh one thing that i wanted to ask you uh if we have anything to add it's kind of what do you see where the videos will go uh, related to the social platforms? Ooh, uh, I, I thought about that. Really, I, I did. Um, there is no clear... I mean, imagine if somebody told you uh, three years ago that short video will be a king. Nobody would believe you. Nobody would believe you. Uh, each platform was forcing uh, longer videos uh, through the the neck of the viewers uh, because they wanted to produce more commercials to put more commercials and people creators obeyed because they are dependent from the algorithm then came tiktok and everything went to beep and so nobody knows what's going to happen next uh short video is here to stay short video will be king for some time uh, a lot of uh, uh, people are betting on that. Therefore, I must say, you have to invest in the short video. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes, most of the times, you cannot say anything meaningful in 60 seconds. Therefore, longer videos will serve as a selling point. Short video will be for brand recognition, and that's it. Uh, just second, Ogin Popovich. If you upload YouTube mm -hmm. videos from the Balkans but made for US market, revenue based on USA rates or per lot rates, uh, Ogin, you get paid uh, money uh, for, uh, based on the, uh, oh my God, based on the uh, person location. So if somebody from US is watching you, you will uh, uh, pay the US rates. If somebody from Balkans is watching you, you will pay the Balkan rates. So uh, it doesn't really matter uh, where you're located. Uh, concerning YouTube, it's important who is watching you, uh, where is, uh, which is their location. And 80% uh, of the YouTube channels uh, got views outside of their ori origin country. So for YouTube, it really doesn't matter. There is a lot of people here that are making exclusive videos for US and getting paid top dollar. Anyhow, to get back to your question, so short videos would be for brand recognition to position yourself as an expert and longer videos uh, will be to confirm your status as an expert and to tell them what they need to know. Perfect. Especially in B2B with longer sales cycles and everything, I think it creates trust and gives you exactly the insights that you need. Are there, you the right person, the right product, the right company, whatever it is. Okay, guys. Uh, I think we went deep and, uh, you know... And we came back, and came back. That. Yeah, exactly. we, we thought like out that. some next podcast would be shit face Designs. We're drinking, we are doing drugs, we have beautiful girls. Um, Mushrooms boys on top of that. And mushrooms in the end. In the end. Let's be real in the end. 
in the end. <laughs> <laughs> and it has to be at least four to five hours long. And live, of course. I mean, without talking about the aliens, we are not doing anything. So. We're going to have to have an alien segment in, in, the, in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Uh, guys, thanks for listening. Alexander, my friend, thanks for, uh, for being here with me. Thanks for sharing everything with people. Thanks for making us all laugh. I think that's, that's more, the most important for us when we come into the certain age to laugh a lot so we can live yes. longer. Yes, I agree with you. And uh, guys, uh, if you like this podcast, subscribe, share it with somebody. Go ahead, uh, follow Alexander on LinkedIn. Send him a message. Tell him that you listen to him on Funky Marketing Podcast. That would be and, great. And, uh, you know, I recommend talking with him on how he can help you improve your YouTube game. Thank you very much, Nemanja, for having me. I hope that you had a fun time. I had a great time. Thanks all the guys who are watching. Please leave a comment for the uh, evil algorithm. Each comment on every platform helps. We need to push this funky marketing podcast. We need to push it to become world famous. So me and him can have our, I'm sorry, <laughs> my beard, <laughs> can have an interesting IT podcast with a lot of uh, strange things. Bye-bye, guys. Keep it funky.